Um, I remember the, one of the very first times I was teaching business <coughs> ethics, I literally go in the room, I say my name, Dalian by the way, uh, and this is business ethics, and a hand goes up immediately in the front of the room, and she says, um, I don't mean this to be rude, but, <laughs> you get it, I don't mean this to be rude, but, um, business ethics, that's what this class is about, right? I said, go on. <laughs> she said, I just, this whole concept doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I understand business, and you get me, right? I understand business, but I'm, I'm an ethical person, don't get me wrong. But I just don't think that that is any place at work. I mean, I'm trying to add to the bottom line. I'm trying to make sure we make profit, or else we go out of business. And so, to me, business ethics is an incoherent concept. It's, a, it's an oxymoron. It's like jumbo shrimp. I'll come back to her. <laughs> Um, echoing a lot of what Ashley nicely said this morning, uh, you know, I think if you're trying to design an ethical system, you're not trying to merely root out the sociopaths, and I think what she said is a bit sociopathic. I think we see more subtler versions of that in normal people also, a, a question of how to balance kind of profit and social missions. Um, and we're not trying to root in or recruit the saints either. Those people are rare and sometimes hard to find. But as we've heard, the refrain of today is what we're trying to do is manage the vast middle. The people like you and I who basically have the right values and, unlike her, kind of want to bring them to work, yet are also capable of really bad behavior. So my area of expertise, the one thing that I do, and one of my great collaborators, Sunita, is in the, hall, in the room here. Uh, she does a lot of great work on this also. So I study conflicts of interest and disclosure and the perverse effects of some of it was mentioned earlier, uh, uh, disclosing your conflicts of interest. And think, people just get conflicts of interest. The lay view of conflicts of interest is kind of wrong. Um, let's take the Enron analysts. These are people who were, uh, by and large, giving Enron spy and strong buy recommendations days prior to its collapse. I was studying conflicts of interest at Carnegie Mellon. I had a little paper I was working on. Then Enron happened, and I was employable life, uh, sadly. Um, but, um, you know, I, 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 a lot of people felt like, what the heck went wrong there they had to know? And I think, to some extent, many of them did know. They were just stealing our money, some of these people. But a lot of people also were telling their friends, and they were buying Enron stock themselves, right? And so they were deluded. It was a good person, or it's a person who believed their own BS, in some sense. So how can a person be so deluded? Well, when you have a conflict of interest, I think people often forget one thing, which is that there's two sides to everything. Even a stock that's a total dog has some upside. And what we've learned from modern psychology is that your beliefs are not from the preponderance of facts, they're from the facts you focus on. And if you focus on the upside, you become optimistic. Um, so what to do about this? Um, so I studied disclosure. I think one of the things, um, I'm all for disclosure, don't get me wrong. I think it's got to be part of the solution. I'm not anti-disclosure. Uh, Sunita and I have published that there's, merit, there's potentially perverse effects. We're, we're saying it's not perfect, it's not a panacea. But that said, there's a couple of things that go wrong with it. I'll highlight at least two. I think one is, related to today, is that if I disclose to you you know, I should tell you that I do millions of dollars, or my firm does millions of dollars uh, of investment consulting business with Enron. Um, and if I told you, like, if I gave Enron a bad review, that would be, the technical word is a career limiting move. <laughs> uh, so take my advice with a grain of salt. That said, Enron, bye, 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 bye. Now, it's, that the problem with that is that, so you've been warned to some extent to take my advice with a grain of salt, but you kind of, to, to echo Nick's earlier talks on bad hats and white hats, you kind of do a bad hat check. Mm. You kind of say, well, Dalian, is he like one of these black hat sociopath people who are going to lie, he's going to lie? I don't think so. So I can trust him to navigate the conflict of interest objectively. That's the mistake. It's not within my power to do so. I might want to do so, but the human brain is just not good at being objective, especially when we're paid not to. Um, 
The other thing that goes wrong, and uh, they, thanks for the plug, nicely commented on some of our research earlier, um, is that when I disclose, I mean, when I disclose to you that I have a conflict of interest, it reduces some of the conflict. I mean, I genuinely want to line my pockets. And I genuinely want to live up to your expectation that I will give you good advice. But when I disclose to you that, well, watch out, I might be biased, your expectations lower, and then my obligations to those lower as well. Expectations turn, I mean, the last 10 years of my research, I'm trying to think that expectations are almost everything. Uh, but we sometimes can't avoid them, uh, pretend not to understand them, all kinds of ways of meeting uh, expectations. Um, so, what to do, I think, you know, James Zerwecki said it nicely, he says, we have to stop confessing our sins, we just have to stop committing them. Uh, you know, my student didn't have any conflicts of interest. She was all profit. And I think there's another dangerous thing that's happening uh, in our field. The pro CSR, the pro ethics people, have a kind of view the other way. There's no conflict in the end. As long as we're long-term thinking, it'll all work out. Do well by doing good. I think it's a powerful message. There's a lot there. At the same time, sometimes our selfish motives and our social motives will conflict. And we have to, in the boardroom, have a frank discussion about what are we going to do when these things conflict, and how are we going to make these trade-offs, and to what expense. Uh, we're not going to go bankrupt to save an owl, but are we going to spend a hundred grand to do this or that? Finally, to my student, I pressed her, I said, it turns out that she worked uh, 70 to 80 hours a week in consulting and sales, and I had a similar background, and we, we bragged about how much we worked, and she, she said, all she did is work and sleep. And I said, well, if you don't bring, if all you do is work and sleep, and you don't bring your ethics to work, then you're literally only ethical in your dreams. 